Hey guys, it's Oscar Cast, and this week we talk about new Kickstarters with some funny light things, uh, some Microsoft Surface rumors, and uh, some interesting new ventures to correct your terms of service and Twitter woes. Awesome Cast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 114 back again on a stormy Pittsburghy day here in the studio. I'm Michael Sorg. Don't know which camera to look at. Hello. And with me as usual on the couch is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Why do you get two camera? I don't have two cameras. They're just a lot of monitors and then there was no graphics on the on the one I was watching and it really confused me and I didn't know if people knew my name. Do you need a hug? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely right now, uh, but 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 not right now. So, how are you doing? I'm well. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Also, moving back, on. Back with us after a after a trip to parts unknown is R- Rob De La Creta. How you doing? I'm good. C- cynical, cynical beast. Where'd you go? I, uh, <laughs> yeah, cynical beast. I like. I uh, yeah, I was in San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I was in in uh, San Diego. Hanging out, eating fish tacos, drinking beers, working, mostly working. But I'm going to Kansas City and uh, on next Wednesday. Excellent. So, Excellent. The butthole of the country. Here I come. <laughs> there you go. This is the awesome cast. This is where we uh, talk about the tech and uh, awesome stuff that we may come across on the internet or in technology, uh, some more than others. And uh, you can uh, contact us or find out past shows and stuff uh, at awesomecast.com. Drop us an email at contact at awesomecast.com. Tweet us at awesomecast, of course, and uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can check us out. Uh, we're at uh, on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and uh, and, and tell your friends, please, and rate us. And you can join us here live every Tuesday. 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room and rate our performance live. Yes, right? Um, I don't know. You can tell already this is going to be a bomb of a show. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. I, I, yes. Trying to get my, keep my head on right now. Um, so I wanted to, well, first I wanted to mention, uh, first, uh, uh, and actually we might be talking to him here uh, next week on the show, old friend, uh, Scarehouse Scott, who's been on the show, like, I think back in the early days. Uh, but he's uh, he's uh, uh, going to be, he's trying to do a panel at uh, South by Southwest. Was, uh, you're, you're familiar with there, Rob. Uh, yeah, the, so, uh, I'll be going back again this year. So if you go over to the South by Southwest panel picker, what are the audios on? Uh, there's some videos over there, and you can look up uh, 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 Scott's thing. A Fright Night Creative Interactive Nightmares, I think, is the name of his uh, of his uh, 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 panel here. Uh, so go check that out and uh, and give him uh, give him a vote so he can get in the, over there. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you going back there again, Rob? Yeah, you are, right? Yeah, yeah, I just said that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Way to pay attention to your own show there. I'm on, I'm on medication to try to still hey. do the show, man. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. What's hey, up? This, this could be old news. There's nothing behind you. No, no. Uh, the banner was in use because we had some shows uh, recently. Uh, but so there was like there was like four really awful monitors back there. This is old news. This is old news. Old is this? Is this news that I should have noticed like two months ago, or mm, maybe about a month ago? Okay, all right. That's I can live with that. Okay, where did they go? They're they're over here now. Oh, so they're still in the studio. I just can't see them. Uh, and you'll you'll love what uh what Chachi's uh, watching the chat room on if it's still working. Is it working yet? Okay, it's not working, so that experiment didn't work. No, uh, old uh, pilot, but it's an it's an old iMac. Oh, sweet. That was found. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to sorry to just derail you there, but the, uh, oh, I've been uh, derailed to begin oh, with. That's okay. Um, so that's this year to do um, pretty much the same thing I did last year. Maybe it's some new fun things that I can't talk about yet. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Um, and we also saw, had another one. This was uh, came to us from the Google Plus because uh, we love the Kickstarters here. But Rob doesn't necessarily like this one. This is the uh, L8 uh, Smart Light. It, 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 it's a uh, Pegged as a soundless speaker for your phone or PC. Now, now, I don't even know how it's it's, it's a bunch of LEDs and sure. and it hooks up uh, and I guess uh, like when you get a te text or an email or something, it pops up with uh, certain icons. Well, I guess it's, uh -huh. it's programmable for the most part. Now, what what do you have against this, Rob? Um, well, okay, so I don't have anything against the product in particular. It's more just like a. It's like. It's like the crowbar already exists, right? And somebody else walks up to you on the street and says, "This is a crowbar," but there's like a there's a notch out of it. <laughs> and it's for like resting your hand, hmm. and you just kind of cock your head to the side, you call them crazy, and you walk away. That's my attitude for this because there are things that you can buy on major retailer websites that do the exact same thing, but they're not acute. Um, and it's not even a design thing. The practicality of this is a little strange to me. But so, apparently it's enough for them to raise two hundred and three thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like I said, it's it's a it's a block of LEDs. So the ones that you'll currently find are like mood lights. There's actually programs for Arduinos that will do actually this, like exactly this. This is basically that in a box. Mm -hmm. But where you can program it to like there was one that I saw that was a Kickstarter, actually, that was a USB dongle. So it's actually very tiny. It was maybe a half inch by like an inch wide or something. Single LED, but it was a multicolor LED. So you could say, I want this to blink blue if I get a new uh, email, you know, or um, if, uh, if a download is complete in transmission, I want it to flash red, something like that. You can do that, which is this, except this has more lights on it. It's the same thing. This has 65 LEDs, apparently. And it says it does uh, in include a few sensors uh, for proximity, temperature, luminosity, uh, and for what's happening with surroundings. Uh, right. So, I mean, it, 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 this is just like another flavor of what, what's already out there, I guess. That's, yeah. That somebody much. else wants to do. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, is that is that I against uh, being Kickstarter just because it, it's it's another version of what, what we expect that's already out there? Right, and like we've said plenty of times, like one of the great things about Kickstarter is it's a way to gauge interest. So somebody like me would like, somebody might come up to me and say, hey, I want to build this thing, and I'd say, you're crazy. It's a waste of time. Nobody needs that. Well, apparently I was wrong because um, at least 2,000 people have given their hard-earned money to this little plastic box. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, Hey. Wow, their levels are a little crazy. Did you did you see the levels on the Kickstarter here? No. $9,216 no. or more. You get the Solar System Tour Pack, which is 144 uh, L8s, whatever these things are, and an LED keychain with an L8 logo, and three t shirts with reflectable L8 logo. That's wow. That's it. Yeah, you 144 of the things basically. It's it's a wholesaler pack, is what it is. But um, but yeah, it's a, like I was like, it's a way, great way to gauge interest. So apparently, there's interest for this of people who have not seen a crowbar with a notch out of it before. And there's nothing wrong. I, I noticed nobody nobody's done any of the uh, uh, backings uh, above the 870 dollar mark. So which right. and those ones are, are 13 of these, which could be like you know. You'll see ideas that are easily viable in a in a reselling retail type sense. Mm -hmm. uh, or somebody who has a store would go to Kickstarter and say, "Like, I'm absolutely going to give you three thousand dollars, which means that I get early access to X amount of these things at a slight discount, which means that I can stick them on a store shelf and make a pretty penny." And have the thing that draws traffic. Nobody seems to have had that idea about this plastic little box with LEDs in it. So mm -hmm. That maybe telling that nobody really was interested in buying more than one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, there's still. I mean, the 870 was like still the like 13 uh, units and everything like that. So I don't know. Another, another interesting thing that uh, that's come across Kickstarter. Thanks, uh, 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 Matt Nero on Twitter uh, for uh, dropping that our way. All right, let's get into the news we had lined up here. Um, so first, the big news today that's come out is from Microsoft Surface. 
some details uh, started leaking out. And, and I know uh, AJ actually passed this along with uh, uh, to us on Twitter. And uh, I, I know Rob, you're not you're not too excited about the surface in general, but he still is. I was actually just making fun of the surface not like 45 minutes ago. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh, for a project, for a lot that I do, I need sort of just like a, a small, very classy looking uh, standalone monitor. A lot of the times, it's just like oh, it's an iPad, and then you realize that you're about to use a $600 piece of equipment that's capable of doing much more than just be a display, not even a touchscreen, and and it just doesn't make sense. So we're like, oh, let's fish around or whatever, and we're looking at everything else, and we joked about using the Surface, and uh, we, we, we all, the only reason that any of us would ever buy a Surface is if we could uh, tether it as an external monitor to a Mac. <laughs> Well, what are the size of these ones? Well, for those that didn't hear the news, um, it looks like the Surface RT is going to be released uh, for $199, completely uh, uh, competitive with what we're seeing out of the uh, Nexus 7 and the Kindle Fire these days. Um, and I, I didn't see it. Is this a comparable size? What is, what is the size of the Surface? Like 10 something, 10.6. So, so this is going to be a $200, like 10 inch tablet. Yeah. We've talked about this power in this thing. What's that? What is it powered by? Uh, th this is the RT one, so this is the ARM, pro ARM uh, uh, powered processor. But what is the speed of said processor? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> tell you that if it's the same processor that's in, say, the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. it is worth about $100. Okay. But if it's, you know, if they're, like, putting, like, quad that in there with a crazy amount of video RAM, then, like, you're actually getting a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, there was actually, not to derail from the surface, but there was news this week that um, the development to put Android on the Raspberry Pi is pretty far along. And the surface news, not to derail the curve, but it's in front of me, and if I don't say it, I'm going to forget. Um, so there's that whole uh, court thing going on between Apple and Samsung right now, mm -hmm. and it um, Apple has licensed its design patents to Microsoft. The exact ones that they're arguing with Samsung over. Um, so, uh, bit li like, there's the running joke that oh, the the Surface looks just like the iPad, and even the interface looks just like the iPad. Yeah, funny story. It's because Apple Apple was paid for that. Hmm. Apparently, real design, the exterior design, but the interface itself. Uh, so instead of Microsoft and Apple facing the same sort of court cases that Samsung and Apple are facing right now, Microsoft came to Apple and uh, paid them lots of money. So this wouldn't happen. Well, you know, that, that, that's good that that's not going to happen. Um, and and those, it's not like those two haven't had a relationship before as far as things go. So, Right. But, uh, yeah, that'll be neat. I don't know. Yep. And, and, and at least it's competitive because I mean when we were looking at like the prices there the, the estimations on prices they were said oh it'd be comparable with all uh, comparable with ultra books or comparable with you know this or the other thing we, we were really expecting this to be like an eight hundred dollar tablet which would have been ridiculous and I think it would have been dead in the water um, but this makes it intriguing actually if this actually comes out uh, it, it is supposedly going to be launching on October twenty sixth so not too far off there. Um, so we'll see when it comes out and see what, what that does and see how much it pisses off all of the, uh, all the manufacturers, apparently. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's ripe for the picking as far as, I mean, if Samsung wants to sue Apple over design infringement, mm -hmm. what Samsung is going to want to do to Microsoft after this thing comes out. Exactly. Exactly. And, and they're already probably... Well, I don't even know if Samsung's an OEM for uh, for Windows 8 just yet. Well, I guess they're making computers, so they got to be doing something along there. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be surprised. So, um, so we'll see. And uh, AJ also uh, in the same vein, he wants to remind us that real player is not dead, guys. <laughs> it's actually there's going to be a real player here. I'll pull it up here. Uh, leaves beta. Uh, it's a full fledged Android app, apparently. So you can enjoy, uh, <laughs> it's a $5, wait, wait, wait. So there's a basic flavor out for free. There's a $5 app for those who like the f finer things of life as uh, and gadget, I think it is here, uh, tells us. Um, so I, I guess 
it's yet another media player for Android devices. Excited, Chachi? Our resident Android person? Nope. Nope. It's real player. It's real player. No one cares. No one cares. <laughs> back in the day. No, even back in the day, it was Winamp. Yeah. No one cared. It kicked the llama's ass. And it's it still did. around. It did. It's still around. Oh, well, somehow. You What's know, that? remember Neo Geo? Yes. You know, there's now a Neo Geo X. Yes, it's like a portable version for two hundred dollars. Includes, I think it comes with comes with seven. Uh, I'm sorry, twenty games and an SD card slot, so you can uh, put more games on it. Like, uh, presumably, purchase a bowl games. Um, I, I was a little confused. Is this just for old games, or are they putting new stuff on this too? With monsters, I have no idea. Um, I'm just looking at the NeoGeoX.com if you're curious. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know who's being... It's, uh, it's a trademark of the SNK Playmore Corporation, which explains why it looks so amazingly awful. Um, looks like it, there's nothing new happening here. No, no. It, it's really, like, uh, for all of us that couldn't afford it before, uh, yeah. now's our chance. But I don't know. I don't want, like, it to be a portable thing. I want it to be... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure these will look great on my HDTV, though. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, witness the rebirth. Okay, okay. But why why can't I get these games on my... Uh, the, the, well, actually, I think they do have a couple of these on iOS, don't they? Uh, I don't know if these in particular, but I, I'm sure they're uh, rip-offs. You know, funny thing, when you say, like, you know, I got this game straight on my HDTV room, the 55-inch at work, mm-hmm. there, there's a strange, like, attractiveness to giant pixely images on gigantic HD television. Well, that's why we have like eight bit art shirts, like yeah. uh, you know. So I know it's I fantastic HD TV. What's that? Yeah, it would look amazing on a on a big HD television. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I, I know it's like uh, my uh, my old uh, 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 Marvel vs. Capcom two on the Xbox is not updated for HD, so you get a little bit of that effect. Like it feels like I'm playing the Sega Saturn game, you know. Or or, or uh, the the Sega Dreamcast game or something like that, so it just stretched for widescreen, I guess. But uh, I I don't know. It, it, it's good to see Neo Geo isn't dead for something that was such a freaking niche. You know, those things were like what was it like six hundred dollars for the console, about one hundred fifty per cartridge, something like that. It was ridiculous. And it looks like it's not so okay. So they got this this portable one, and then they do have a like it looks like a, a, a more console version with the old school joystick and everything like that. Um, like I said it comes with like twenty classic games. So you, you got your Metal Slug, you got your Fatal Furies. Uh, you got like three different Fatal Furies, actually. Um, or is there a King of Fighters in there, probably? So, I mean, that, that that looks... I don't know. If you got the money to burn on it and, uh, and you know, you weren't one of the cool kids that had a Neo Geo, why not? So, so you know Neo Geo was around for 10 years before it tanked? I don't know how it survived. Well, you know, granted, okay, they had a lot of arcade machines. That had to be yeah. how they survived. They couldn't have been on the home console business. Because... So, uh, in 1990, had, they had the arcade system. Yeah. And then a few years later, they came out with the Neo Geo CD. Is what it was. I think that's where it went downhill. Because they couldn't keep up with the... The CD technology wasn't that great back then. You know? The CDs were between 50 and $300. Oh, jeez. Jeez. <laughs> I'm sure you'd laugh. I'm sure it fits on an iPhone now. You know? So. Um, awesome. Thank you for evoking the Neo Geo on the show there, Rob. Yeah, I do what I can. <laughs> um, another one, uh, uh, you know, I've been following the Google Hangout. They've been adding a lot of tools to it lately. Um, this was an interesting one that came up. They're adding a studio mode to Hangouts on air uh, for basically improving music quality. So I guess it's if you're like a band and you're, you're you know, trying to do a Hangout on air uh, for, you know, live playing uh, online. Uh, what it'll do is it'll take it out of the mode that typically happens when we do hangouts. So, we, you know, it's just optimized for talk and uh, it, it'll put it in a different mode uh, for music, I guess, you know, whatever it does for compression and stuff like that. Um, so it's really cool to see uh, another interesting new tool uh, uh, coming at hangout. 
So I, I know there's been ones recently, like I haven't even got the chance to play with, but there's like a cameraman app. Uh, somebody was telling me about that if we did a hangout on air, like like we were trying to do this show, we could, um, you know, kind of control who comes in and who gets muted and who gets allowed to talk as they, as they drop in, you know, a little more of a, a studio set up to it. So um, I, I don't know. What do you think about this? Do, do, do you think this will, you know, be a, a pretty good tool for, you know, bands trying to get out there? Sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, isn't there a bunch of stuff that already kind of does this? This is just more mainstream, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think uh, the the thing is Google Hangout is 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 more accessible than a lot of the other things that may do this already. You know, I mean, the, the most of the you know, there's Ustream, there's Justin TV, but this is uh, uh, lends itself to a little more interactivity. You know, I mean, you you can still do this and have your band there in one window, and then you know, uh, you can have your VIPs coming across there. I think they've upgraded to uh, twelve people recently for Hangouts on Air. To be in a in one of them, you know, because nine wasn't confusing enough in some instances, um, you know, I, this is really becoming, I think, an interesting platform for creation, and uh, and you're seeing a lot more of these uh, more kind of podcast esque things uh, pop up, you know, you know people. You know, it, it takes less for people to go out and say, hey, I want to get my friends together and, you know, say, you know, BS about wrestling, BS about technology and and see if they get a, a, a falling out of it. And uh, I, I, I'm waiting for that thing that kind of is born out of Google Hangout and steps up to the next level from there or some kind of the subculture is already there. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed whenever I go to the Hangout tab and see how much stuff is going like. Like I, I know, there's there's a few uh, wrestling hangouts. There's there's stuff for photography. There's stuff for all kinds of genres. So, so it, it's interesting. I, I like I like to see a hangout growing. So, excellent. Um, so another one I had on here. Now I, I I've been this has been on the fringe because I hear about it and I hate the idea already. Um, I don't know if either of you have heard much about App.net. You can join the movement at join.app.net. They kind of did a Kickstarter sort of campaign. Uh, they, they they met their goal, which uh, I can't remember what the goal was uh, off the top of my head. But if you want to be a member, it's $50. And this is basically Twitter. Oh. Um, basically, uh, this, this guy... says it's, it's, it's Twitter for developers, not for advertisers first. Um, you know, because, you know, everything we're seeing lately about Twitter being uh, uh, pulling back the reins on its API on a lot of people that, you know, a lot of the, the companies that have kind of they were built on. Um, <laughs> I just saw Ciro say that real player is still hip in the chat room. Um, so basically the idea of this is you buy into it, $50, you get your username and uh, it's $100 for a developer uh, tier. This sounds like the, what was going on with Facebook. What was the alternative Facebook? The Diaspora, was it? Diaspora. Diaspora. Yeah. Um, and, and, and how's that going, you know? And I can't imagine somebody, like, taking on a Twitter client or not. It's a Twitter alternative, basically, from, from what I can gather from it. And drop it $50 on it? I, I, where is this going to go? Well, so the reason Diaspora failed... I'm sure it's still alive and somebody thinks it's going to succeed, but it failed, um, is because the idea was to get away from the control of Facebook and all of these privacy issues, but it was based on an open source system, which meant that ultimately all of, like, if there is a system that exists, it is hackable. If there is open source system that exists, it is infinitely hackable. Mm -hmm. Um and so nobody really had faith in it. I mean, you know, the open source thing is like a, you know, there's a reason that like the the code for say OS X hypothetically and Windows, like the the code for all these things is very highly protected. Um, just as all of the code that is inside of Twitter is pretty well protected, and whenever it's broken into, it's a big bad thing, and then they have to change the code and lock it down. That's why Diaspora didn't exist. This is this is adapting to like you said the problem we were seeing where uh people are saying that twitter is no longer catering to the folks that are building apps for their platform and 
and how it's just a bunch of advertisers and all this, which is the same sort of fatigue we saw, you know, MySpace versus Facebook, when people are like, oh, I like Facebook better, it's simple. This is the exact same thing, except it's simple because you're paying $50 to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, this is certainly something where if all of your friends are using it, it will succeed, but it'll ex succeed for you, but it won't ever succeed on a scale in which Twitter has succeeded because it is not free. No, this isn't for this isn't for the general audience. Yeah, I mean, like me personally, I'm kind of curious about it uh, yeah. because, I mean, Twitter. I haven't. Everybody I know who actually used Twitter usefully at one time now has fatigue from it, and nobody wants to deal with it. Which is why it's. I mean, I made a pretty sweet joke about some some crickets and and some hard, heavy metal last night. That's the, like the level of intelligence on my Twitter feed at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this looks like. And, I, um, you know, you look at the people who are into this, and it's John Gruber, it's Robert Scoble, it's Marco, it's Peter Rojas, it's, the, you know, Leo Laporte, somewhere one up there. It's the usual characters who are the same sort of people who have them Twitter bandwagon back in, like, 2006. So it's a place for them to go uh, so they can have their high-level conversations and not have the fanboys. Uh, yeah, and I guarantee half of these people are going to fade out after a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From this as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, stuff I've been hearing about it is uh, people saying, yeah, I put my $50 in and I got my username uh, just so I have it, you know, as a just in case or just so I can see what it's like so I know what I'm talking about. That's all I'm seeing. I, I, I just see other developers and other uh, tech journalists uh, mm -hmm. getting into it. I, I can't see any reason anybody else wants to. Um, unless something happens. It, now, they got the one big part about this is they have the API spec on G GitHub. Uh, which is a, uh, how would you ex explain GitHub to the uninitiated there, Rob? Um, GitHub is a, uh, we'll call it a social code sharing and, um, and uh, contributive network. So you, you have a project, you put it up on GitHub, like say Mike builds a widget, then I can come in and make a, a contribution to put the syllables in the wrong Um I can make a contribution to Mike's project and say, hey, this is the thing. I added to your thing. And you say, oh, cool, that's great. So it mm -hmm. takes sort of open open source mentality and, and creates a, a community of people who are capable of building and producing projects as well as just creating a platform for deploying software, whether you're sharing it with other people or not. Sierra mm -hmm. uh, says it sounds like the Facebook that Anonymous was making. Anonymous was making a Facebook? I, yeah, there was some speculation for a while that they were going to do like a big open uh, super anonymous one or something like that. So, um, like I were like aside from the diaspora that we were we were hearing about, of course. So, um, I, eh, yes and no. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if anything ever came of the uh, anonymous thing, to be honest. So, I don't know. I, I we'll see how it goes. I, I think this is going to fade off unless somebody does really something really uh, uh, out of left field. You know, it, it, but it just seems like it's it's trying to be another Twitter that doesn't make Twitter's mistakes, but Twitter's mistakes are what's made it big yep. in the long run. So, you know, there's that. So how about changing uh, 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 terms of service so you don't have to read it there, Rob? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's this uh, uh, <laughs> there's this initiative going on right now uh, from TOS-DR.info. And uh, basically, they're, they're trying to, I don't know how to put this, wikiify terms of services. So from the, the, this guy, the guy behind this actually was on uh, Tech News Today talking about this. And uh, apparently, like, if you're if you participate in this, you basically plug in your terms of service. And I think it will spit out basically kind of like when you. Um, allow an app to access your Facebook or your Twitter account. You kind of get these icons of this mean th this uh, connection will do this, this, and this, and it's kind of, it's kind of iconed and explained a little bit. Uh, you know, more dumbed down, so I you know so I get it. Um, versus a big you know TOS kind of explanation. Uh, this is this seems to what these guys endeavor to do, and this is just the beginning of the project. So we'll see how it goes from here. Uh, Are they? My my first question here. So this this TOS, um, we'll call it translator. Um, are they proposing this as a serious tool or is it like just kidding like this is just sort of no it, it, it sounds like it's a serious toy it's it's because who reads terms of services 
And then I'm going to say none of the people in the project have ever been sued before, nor do they understand the law system in okay. any shape or form. So is there anything against that's being interpreted so that the common person understands what's going on? I mean, I'm all for I'm all for like dropping terms of service down to shorter things and more layman's things. But there's mm-hmm. a reason that most law still sounds ridiculous is because, uh, well, you know, we live in America where anybody can sue anybody else. But also because so TOS does two things. It covers your ass and it covers my ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to dumb it down because it works. Again, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting like caveat because, you know, I say that it works and you're like, well, it's a 20 page document. Really like, well, if you want to really use the software, you should really read that 20 page document. Mm-hmm. Well, here, it, it actually has some examples on the site uh, of some rated services. And you see there's a bit of a, a icon thing to it, uh, like Twitter, you know, uh, you, you have the right to leave service, promise to inform uh, about data requests. And it kind of has like a rating icon next to it. Um, you know, TwitPick has something about uh, deleted images are not really deleted. So there's kind of an X that that's kind of a weird, you know, something to be wary about. The thumbs down stuff uh, by something about reduction of legal period for cause of action. So, I mean, at least like if you don't know what that means, you see a nice thumbs down there. It says maybe you should be wary of that. Um, you know, you go to some, down to something like Steam, it says, you know, says about its no, no refund policy and it has an icon by that and i don't know what the key is to to all this yet but i i think this would be i think people would be able to pay more attention to something like this if it was more visualized and i don't think this replaces the tos this is just a interpretation of the tos mm, that's the problem though okay because i did you... because i didn't read the tos i don't fully understand or have interpreted and right. And so what, what's going to happen is you do something against my TOS. I take you to court. And you say, "Oh, well, I read the bullet points, mm-hmm. and, uh, and the bullet <coughs> the bullet points are an interpretation of the TOS." Mm-hmm. Why? Well, and I do think that uh, in the long run, this is going to be a uh, like the people with the TOS will submit to this and have it approved. Uh, from my interpretation of what's going on with this. I think so. you're going to be hard-pressed to find a lawyer that's going to advise you to take a TOS <laughs> and dump it down into, like, eight bullet points. But is that much different than how many people have read it and, and get mm-hmm. in a situation like that? How many people get in their car and don't obey the law? There you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's interesting. Something to look out for. Again, that's uh, that's TOS-DR.com. Info. If you want to uh, find out more information on that, I know I'm not even scratching the surface on on what they're uh, trying to do here, and I'm sure somebody with legal knowledge is probably just tearing us apart right now. Listen to this, uh, but go check that out. Uh, it, it's an interesting, uh, interesting thing they're doing over there. Excellent, excellent. So Chachi, I know. I yes, skipped you. I know. I skipped you last week. Yes, I want to make sure I don't do that this yeah. week. So, uh, so tell us what's going on in SirCoinToBegin dot com. What are well, some big I news items have, over there? I have two stories. Okay, okay. Um, because you skipped me last week, <laughs> Jack guys. Um, no, uh, Zynga is branching out, mm-hmm. and they're getting their uh, uh, their their asses sued off. Yes, they are. Um, uh, Zynga is teaming up with Hasbro. <laughs> to release board games of their games. Mm-hmm. Um, Words with Friends, uh, Farmville, uh, Cityville, Monopoly, and Draw Something are all games that are going to be released in a, ber- a board version. Um, as you can guess, Words with Friends is Scrabble, uh, Draw Something is Pictionary. They described Farmville as being hungry, hungry hippos without the hippos. What? Yeah. And Cityville Monopoly is building skyscrapers, the first of four wins. Hmm. That's the most details they've given out so far. Um, but, so, uh, they kind of released that news, and that news got overcast by the fact that uh, there are some questionable business decisions that are going <laughs> to result in civil lawsuits because... Uh, Insider trading, basically. Um, half the company sold stock before a huge drop, and they never announced it. 
In fact, they spent $16 million trying to work on loopholes to stop them from getting in trouble, which isn't going to work. Uh, the CEO sold 16.5 million shares for $200 million. Google sold $4 million for $48 million. For forty-eight million dollars, and the CEO, COO, who is no longer with the company due to a restructuring, they took away all of his responsibilities, so he left. Uh, he sold three hundred twenty-two thousand shares for three point nine million. So uh, they're in trouble. On top of being sued. Yeah, uh, and so I mean that's going to lead to civil lawsuits from their shareholders. Uh, on top of the fact that EA is trying to sue the crap out of them for stealing uh, the Facebook version of The Sims that they released. Um, they're claiming intellectual property because the game is too similar to be different. Um, but uh, it, this isn't the first time that Zenga's done something like this. They've actually stolen two other games from people mm -hmm. uh, to release. Uh, Tiny Tower and... Uh, Bingo Blitz are the games. So, uh, Zynga's busy right now. Uh, but, if you work there, you get shares that are worth $2.35 a piece as a incentive to not leave the company. Hmm. So, yeah, there's that. Yeah, that, that's not good for morale <laughs> at that point there. Um, well, yeah. it, when the CEO left, they thought there was going to be a mass exodus. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh, crap. Well, here, take part of the company that's only worth a couple bucks. Yeah, yeah. But yeah then I, I uh, related it to them walking around with stacks of paper saying, do you need some scrap paper? Here, <laughs> have some stock. <laughs> I think it's been one of the more interesting stories uh, uh, since they basically were built on Facebook. And uh, and, and I think I think... Facebook gaming, vice versa, right? Like they're they're pretty much like the big guys. I know now we got Angry Birds and we got a lot of people coming over, but Zynga was the ones that really started the right yeah, addiction with, to with, Facebook games. Yeah, it was Farmville and the poker and everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, mobsters and whatever the hell that vampire game. Can, is. can you really be surprised at half of this stuff after after? Well, the Tiny Tower thing is like an is an older story, of course, and uh, uh, draw something. Uh, all the uh, sketchy stuff that happened on Twitter there uh, uh, around that. Oh, no, they're done. They're done? Yeah, they're, you think done. they're done. Yeah. You're not going to survive this one? No. What, no. Do you, what do you think, Rob? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I got nothing. That means Rob doesn't care. It's games. It's Facebook games. It's yeah. even worse, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it's sort of like me. You were on the fence of buying the new Call of Duty game that comes out in November. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Ops 2 from Treyarch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I, I just recently returned to Modern Warfare 3. So. Yeah, you're probably going to buy it. Oh, why? Um, well, they changed everything. They changed everything? Yeah. That's not necessarily good. Uh, you know how when we used to play Quake? Quick live and you try to broadcast it so that people could watch us. Yeah, yeah. Treyarch said, "Here you go." It, uh, it, included in the multiplayer is live streaming. To for like the Xbox version, everything, Xbox, PS3, PC, all live stream mm -hmm. um, with USB support, so you can hook up an external camera, so that you can stream both you and the game. Wow. And uh, Treyarch is going to help with the whole esports movement. Now, is this? Now, you sent another story to me about another another group that had a same really, exact thing. Is, is this the same technology? Yeah, same technology. Excellent. So, oh. so this is this has been an ongoing thing. Like, uh, what CBS is going to get uh, esport gaming? Uh, I, I think we've talked about it in the past uh, uh, coming up. I, and and uh, you know YouTube. There's all kinds of sites uh, surrounding this. Machinima. Uh, the, the, yeah. Do they do esports on there, right? Um, so and, and the display we saw at New York Comic Con last year, even right. um, uh, it, it, it's showing up. People are watching. People love watching other people play games. Esports is about to take the the forefront 
mm-hmm. um, when it comes to gaming. That's tremendous that they're building it right in a watch. It's probably going to require like a Call of Duty Elite or something like that in order to do it. No, no? I don't think no? so. Um, because part of their multiplayer expansion is esports. Hmm. Built in with the multiplayer is the uh, same level divisions mm-hmm. in which uh, you move up. Excellent. And, and, and you become ranked. Uh, among other competitors in the world, which is, which is they've they've done that before with the ranking system, but now it's kind of becoming more of a pu- it means public thing. more. It means more, yeah. Because so, what are they going to do? This is probably going to go into like some of the programming on uh, what they're doing on Elite. It, it would have to. I yeah. mean, you can't give people rankings and then not, especially yeah. with with what esports is trying to do, mm-hmm. like the Electronic Gaming League. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, this is just an e- uh, this kicks the door open. That's tremendous. I mean, I, I mean, no, no more do you have to go out and get your own sponsors and then find events. Yeah. Um, with this, the sponsors will come to you if you're good enough. Wow. So, so now, now I can uh, get that Black Ops to play ridiculous amounts. So. So, the, you know, that just makes it sad because, you know, the people just obliterating you now when you play a multiplayer online, like the day it came out, they're mm-hmm. probably like to the point where they're making money. Yeah, but you won't have to be obliterated by them. Why? There's divisions. Because of the ranking. Yeah. You won't play with them anymore. That doesn't. Se- so, so that's going to work a lot better than it does in Modern Warfare Three, right? Because I know Modern Warfare Three, like it, it, it's almost like we we would get that one person in there that just obliterates our whole team, right? Yeah, that won't happen anymore. Because hmm. as long as you check the box or whatever, then you're in a division of people who suck as bad as you do. Yes, <laughs> that's all I want. That's all I ask from these games. Is to play with people that suck as much as I do. You will no longer get killed 30 times with one kill. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's still possible because, I mean, we are pretty bad at the game. We do. We do. We are the Yen's yeah. team of Modern Warfare. So, those are some exciting updates. You sound excited. Thanks for that. <laughs> Excellent. Anything else going on out there, uh, Rob, uh, that uh, you may have been caught? Um, secret hidden of the MacBook Air. It can cut bagels. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it just came up on BuzzFeed. Excellent. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. It can cut bagels. If, if your ultra thin laptop can't cut bagels, it's not as good as a laptop air. There you go. There you go. Laptop air. I just said laptop air. You did. You did. did. You you must be feel as tired as I do. Um, yeah, a little bit. Man, it's one of those days, man. Hey, it's a slow news week. It storms. It's crazy. Um, we're on Mars! And we're on Mars. Well, we talked about Mars last week. I know. Although there was a really cool 360-degree. Uh, uh, it's, on, it's on my Google Plus from this week. Uh, it looks like they're they're uh, street mapping Mars as they go. And you, and you can do the 360 uh, uh, view of, of it, and they have the little arrow, and you go along the path. I mean, it's not very far, and it's just like a valley between some mountains. But um, but no, it's pretty cool because you're like you're like this is freaking Mars, man. So we're there. Have you seen the uh, Have you seen the parody Twitter accounts for the Mars Curiosity rover? I no. follow uh, sarcastic. I, I follow the sarcastic one. Yeah, sarcastic rover is yes. amazing. Awesome. In oh. fact, it just tweeted. I can't actually read like any of the tweets, but it says uh, when it comes to the search for extraterrestrial life. NASA holds to a policy of bros before probes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's amazing. I know Obama called NASA, the, the team behind the Mars Curiosity mission, and said, let me know if you find life. <laughs> yeah, there's there's another tweet by a sarcastic rover that was like, oh, no, it's cool, Obama. Uh, yeah, I was totally done talking with you. I'm busy. I got to go check out these rocks <laughs> and these other rocks <laughs> and those rocks. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, guys, this has been your awesome cast, uh, uh, the slow week edition, I guess. Um, check out more better editions at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com. Tweet us 
at Awesome Cast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus, and uh, we listen to contributions as we got a lot of them this week. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna do so much flipping biology up here that life on Earth would start wishing I wish I was searching for it. True that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Rob De La Creatis at RobJDLC.com. He's doing, <laughs> he's the cynical beast that's over at Ion Tank. Been parked in the same place for a week. If this was Detroit, I'd be nothing but a burnout shell by now. Go economic recovery. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm on the internet. I'm uh, on the internet. Oh, are we announcing that thing yet? That thing that we're doing in October? Uh, it just got announced today, or I, I believe today or yesterday. Should probably give people the date, right? Yeah, the date is, uh, when's the date? I don't know. <laughs> Pod Camp Pittsburgh's coming, guys, and there's an officially official date now. That I'll get, I'll get here shortly. I believe it's the weekend of the 27th, October 27th. I know, I know when we, uh, uh, kind of semi announced the previous dates there's some people are, that had their vacations and i know you can go there it is we'll be we'll be back at point park university october 27th and 28th uh we're going to be uh trying to do something different to make sure you guys get streams and videos of all the sessions if you, you're unable to attend um and i'll be doing uh, it's actually full tomorrow but uh i'll be doing an intro to uh, facebook intro to facebook tomorrow down at the Carnegie Library in Oakland. I got two um, more. You got two more? Yeah. All right, all right, Taji. <laughs> Ready uh, to start driving around in a pointless effing circle looking for some kind of magical dirt or whatever. Go science. And then... Love my software upgrade. If you're a robot, I highly recommend getting Skynet. It makes you feel dot, 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 powerful. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Chachi's at insert coin to begin dot com. I am everywhere. At Chachi says, a new episode of Unsung on uh, PittsburghOnVideo.org came up where we find out what's going on at the point. At the point. At the point about that fountain thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so go check that out. PittsburghOnVideo.com. <laughs> I'm over at Sorgatron.com. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's a fountain. That was oh, a fountain it's the noise. fountain. Okay. Okay. It's going to be nice. It's gonna be nice from what they're saying. Um, and I can check is out. There, is there gonna be a? I'm out of the loop on the facade to totally ruin the end of the show here. Is there gonna be a fountain? There's gonna be a fountain. Yes. We're getting a fountain back. Yes. We're getting a fountain yes, back. Yes, and it goes. <laughs> what, is there like a date? Uh, next summer should be open by next, next summer. summer. Next summer. You're okay. gonna to have to watch the episode to uh, to find out. Yeah. I man. I better do things that I can't say on this show when that fountain turns on, or I'm going to be so disappointed. Do you want to pee in it? No. It's Another expression of joy. Oh. There you go. If that doesn't happen when they turn the fountain on, I'm going to be so bummed. Because it's been like, what, five years? Yeah, it's been, it feels like it's been forever. Is it going to be like a, 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 a disappearing waterfall and, and, and all this stuff? It's going to be real nice, new LEDs and... And, and everything, and and I think you're going to be able to wait in in it, in it like officially, Ooh. like not like I just snuck and climbed over the thing uh, uh, to 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 take a bath in the. So the bums are going to love that. Uh, but with that, guys, <laughs> thanks a lot for joining us. You can join us at uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, more or less, and uh, and, and talk with us about uh, tech and stuff. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our aw- awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>
If you made a GIF, it would last forever. <laughs> That's true. Somebody make it. Somebody out there make it. Make it happen. Make a GIF. Are you listening to uh, Roderick yet at all? Uh, I did a little bit. I don't know. I can't get into it yet. Can't get into it. What, which ones did you listen to? I don't know. I like the last couple, I guess. Did you listen to the one where they went off about Hitler? Uh, no. The one was about the way people talk. The way people talk? They talk about that a lot, unfortunately. Oh. But there was, uh, there was an episode where uh, John started out, like, but, you know, Macs haven't been super popular until the last decade, and in the last five years, they've superseded the sale of every other computer platform. So... There's that. Oh yeah, that dance. We need that in there too. <laughs> this is this is how we prepare. We both had really shitty days, and we've just been jamming and uh, getting ready. Playing Pac-Man. Try to get that energy level up, you know. <laughs> 